all you have to do to get a nice color grade on the Mini 3 Pro is add some contrast, a bit of saturation, and perhaps lift the shadows. But there is one secret that you need to know while shooting to get the best image possible. Hello, my name is Jonathan Palfrey. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe as always as it massively helps me out. Now today is a bit of a quick one just looking at how I color grade my Mini 3 Pro footage. Now I don't claim to be any expert at all when it comes to color grading. Um, I do it quite a bit. I do a decent enough job for my clients, but certainly I'm not some advanced expert on this at all and there's people out there who can do a much better job. But hopefully this could be a little good introduction and just getting you by just to try and start improving uh, the images that you get out of your Mini 3 Pro. As I mentioned at the beginning, it's actually quite simple to color grade the footage from this drone. There's no LUT needed at all, and that's because you can't actually shoot D-Log, so the image actually isn't that flat. Instead, the flattest image that we can get out of this is by shooting d cine like and that is really key uh, to getting the most information possible. But even then, it's not really that flat, and you're not going to have a huge amount of dynamic range to work with. Getting the best color grade from the Mini 3 Pro is all about getting the most information captured in the drone when you're actually shooting. So first off, you need to make sure you're shooting H.265 as this will allow you to shoot 10-bit. 10-bit has far more color information. It means you're gonna have far less banding in the sky, which is obviously really key when shooting drone footage. Finally, and this is the big secret in terms of getting the best image possible and the best color grade out of your Mini 3 Pro, the big secret is to make sure you protect your highlights. Protect your highlights at all costs. And how you do that is by simply turning on the zebras. Now, in DJI drones, they call this the overexposure warning. So make sure you turn that on and that's gonna turn on your zebras so that basically anything that is clipping is going to come up on your screen while flying. Now these can be annoying and they can really get in the way, especially if you're flicking between uh, photography and video, but it is really critical. I leave them on all the time on all my DJI drones. It's the one thing that I just really religiously stick to when flying with this drone. Shutter speed, I'm not so worried about, but I think protecting those highlights, that is really key to getting a cinematic image. If we look at this bit of footage here of this valley and landscape from the previous video I did where I talked about uh, sharpness and noise reduction update on the Mini 3 Pro, so make sure you go and check out that film. As you can see here though, I've really gone and protected the sky. Yes, it's blown out around the sun. There's nothing you can do about that. It's always going to blow on these drones. But I've really tried to limit it as much as possible to just right around the sun and the few clouds that are around it. Everything else in the sky though, it has been protected. You can still see a bit of blue sky there and you can still see detail in the clouds. Now this has meant that the actual valley down below is underexposed, but I'm not worried about that because for me, I think having that protected highlights, that's what gives it that nicer cinematic look. I don't mind having more shadows down below and less detail down there. And you can always lift those shadows. Don't be afraid to do that, especially online with YouTube. If we see here uh, where I turn this node on, you can see I've added uh, 1.2 uh, contrast, and that's generally the amount of contrast I add to all my Mini 3 Pro footage. It seems to bring it back from decently like into a nice pleasing sort of general image as a good starting point for most color grades. With the saturation, this usually varies a little bit. Sometimes it's uh, around 52, sometimes up to 55, but it's not too much, just a bit of extra saturation added back in there just to bring it back to life. Now, if you look down below, you can see I've actually lifted the shadows a little bit. I could go a bit further if I wanted to see more detail down there. I wouldn't be afraid to lift them further. At the end of the day, your footage is going up onto YouTube. It's going up online. So don't worry too much about the noise in the shadows. You know, yes, it might look quite noisy when playing back on your computer, but reality, once it's compressed and online, you're probably not gonna really see it. Your viewers aren't gonna really notice it. So if you do need to lift them, then certainly go ahead. But I'm actually quite happy with these kind of shots just to keep them all looking quite dark. 
when it comes to the highlights i do try and bring them down a little bit but of course that sun is clipped so you've got to be careful not to bring it down too much because then you'll really notice um, where the image has clipped so yeah you can bring it down and maybe save a bit of, uh, of, of uh, data that was still up there in the highlights and you can see on the waveform it brings back a little bit but you don't want to go too far because otherwise it's just going to not look that nice again on the second node here, you can see I've actually kind of given it a bit more of a look. I've really warmed up the image. It's just a personal preference. I think the Mini 3 Pro footage looks really nice when really warmed up, especially at this time of day where it was near golden hour. Now, if you do want to see more detail, what I would just do is a secondary shot. Rather than trying to get it all in one, embrace the shadows, make sure you protect those highlights, and then just do a second shot where you expose for the landscape. This is where you can do effectively your close-up or your secondary angle, where you can get that detail that perhaps you couldn't get in the other shot. As you can see in this image here, the actual base image is a lot brighter than the other one. So I've actually increased the exposure on the drone so that there's more light going in. And this is another little tip. I always try and make sure I maximize the image from the drone. I always try and make sure that I'm just below clipping highlights. So whatever the brightest part of that image is, I'll tweak the exposure so that it, it just starts clipping and then I bring it back that one step on the shutter just so that you're getting the maximum information in your image at all times. This is why you don't really want to be too strict about the shutter rule. You've got to give yourself a little bit of leeway either way when you're applying your ND filters on your drone. Because you don't have aperture control in the Mini 3 Pro, you're going to have to use that shutter, even a little bit, just to make sure that you can control and maximize your image. So now with this image, because we've maximized our dynamic range by just cutting out the sky, we're just avoiding looking at the sky so that we can just really look at the valley below and make sure that we can increase the exposure as far as possible. Actually, it meant that I could bring things down a little bit in post. So it gives you an even cleaner image than if you were to shoot this at perhaps the correct exposure on the drone uh, as you're flying. So because I was slightly overexposed here, but not clipping, key thing there, I've actually brought down the highlights slightly and I've also brought down the mid-tones just to give it a slightly richer image. I'd love to know how you color grade your Mini 3 Pro footage. Please leave a comment down below because I'm really fascinated about how other people are handling it as well. As I've said, this isn't a drone with a huge amount of dynamic range. However, you can get amazing results out of it if you just know how to control the image and protect the highlights. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please like and subscribe as it massively helps me out. And thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.